here's your primer on COVID-19 vaccines. If history is of any guide, it usually takes 8 to 20 years for a new vaccine to be developed, but the process of finding an antidote for COVID-19 has bugged that trend. Within one year, scientists around the world have come up with over 60 COVID-19 vaccine candidates. Six of them have been given the green light for commercial use as of January 2021. Two messenger RNA vaccines by Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna, two viral vector vaccines by Oxford, AstraZeneca and Gemalaya, and two inactivated virus vaccines by Sinopharm and Sinovac. Here's your primer on COVID-19 vaccines. All vaccines work by teaching our bodies to recognize and fight a certain pathogen in a safe way. They encourage our immune system to produce antibodies, T cells, which are very important white blood cells, or both. So that if we get infected later, our built-in defense mechanism knows how to fight back. Vaccines are comprised of the pathogen we're intending to fight off in a form that is not harmful for us. They differ according to the version of the disease-causing organism they contain, dead, alive, attenuated, or just bits of it. Let's start with messenger RNA vaccines. Messenger RNA is a sequence of genetic code that tells our body cells what proteins to build so they can function. When a synthetic version of a virus messenger RNA gets injected in us, our body cells will read it as an instruction to build the relevant viral protein. Our immune system will then respond to it, and in doing so, it learns how to protect against future infections by that virus. Think of the messenger RNA vaccine as someone handing a detailed record of a virus to our immune system. The system studies the file and finds a way to defend against the pathogen. Now, viral vector vaccines. It uses a harmless virus that is altered by introducing part of its genetic material, like the code for COVID-19 spike protein, which binds with receptors on the cells of its victims, and transport the code into our cells, which will then produce the protein. This will trigger an immune response, getting our body ready to attack the real virus. Ebola vaccines have used this method. And last but not least, inactivated vaccines. This is the most traditional and commonly used technology. Just as the name implies, the virus is cultured and then stripped of its disease-producing capacity before being injected in us. While the injected virus cannot cause diseases, it will cause our bodies to produce an immune response which will protect against future infections. Whooping cough, rabies and hepatitis A all used inactivated vaccines. So COVID-19 vaccines are now ready. But how effective are they? Of all six frontrunners, the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine is the most effective at 95% according to primary efficacy analysis. Efficacy rate refers to the percentage reduction in infection among those vaccinated instead of the percentage of vaccinated people who won't get infected. This is to say, even with a vaccine, no one is 100% safe from coronavirus. However, after new coronavirus variants were identified in South Africa, the UK, Brazil and other countries, concern is growing over whether the current jabs still work. Although the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines top the effectiveness chart, they face a major challenge. They have to be kept at minus 70 degrees Celsius and minus 20 degrees Celsius respectively, whereas injections from Oxford AstraZeneca, Gemalaya, Sinopharm and Sinovac can be stored at normal refrigerator temperatures, which is more practical, especially in developing countries. However, the six jabs share one similarity. They all require two doses a priming shot and then a booster shot between 14 and 28 days later, depending on the vaccine. Vaccination campaigns are being rolled out in many countries, but a make it or break it factor is side effects. It's a legitimate concern that could potentially deter people from getting their shots. From the existing yet very limited information available, the side effects of COVID-19 vaccines include headaches, fever, tiredness, soreness and redness at the site of injection. Serious allergic reactions have also been detected, but that's a two in a million chance. Over 40 countries have now begun vaccinating against COVID-19. They're mainly high or middle income nations, which risks leaving poorer countries behind. On January 11th, the World Health Organization called for a collective commitment to ensure that coronavirus vaccinations for health workers and at-risk groups in all countries 
can begin within the next 100 days. It's working to accelerate vaccine rollout through its COVAX initiative in lower and middle income countries. The world won't be safe unless vaccines are available and affordable to all. So the faster people around the world can get vaccinated, the sooner we can go back to a semblance of normality. It might be some time before this goal is achieved, but until then, we need to keep in mind the importance of social distancing and wearing masks. That's it for today. I'm Ning. I'll see you next time.